All right, on the bench, we got a 2009 Sebastian Stenzel classical guitar. And I'm gonna be doing a fret job on here. And one of the main reasons why is the amount of relief that we have at the seventh fret. I can comfortably get a 16 thou gauge under at the fifth. Almost what there goes, 15 thou. Ninth, I can get a 15. Stops there. Stops there. So we definitely have excess bow. And let's look at first position. We got the six string set, about 34. I think we can do better than that. So let's get this in the jig and get to work. Another thing we're gonna work on is the bridge. Let's see if the camera can make it out. What we have going on are we have the string sitting on the wood instead of the saddle. So I'm going to do a little bit of bridge modification, not much. Alright guys, I'm going to show you all how um, I approach leveling the fingerboard. I've already pulled the frets out and done the initial planing with um, my low angle jack, Lee Nielsen number 62. Came back, my old number four smoother, old Bailey. Uh, then from there, I go to a number seven that I put 80 grit stick it on. Then from there, I go to uh, a 220. It's a Stanley transitional. And then this one's 300 just to polish everything up. And of course, I use my sanding beam that has 80, 120. And I also use a little eight inch die as well. Uh, but let's go at this with some 220 and see what happens. So you can see, we're high here, we're high here. And I already removed a decent amount with the pan planes. Uh, so this board had a significant amount of uh, relief in it, but it also looks like it almost has a little bit of a twist as well. Uh, not the best piece of ebony, it's pretty chippy, uh, but we'll get it straightened out, especially having it in the jig. So let's keep going. I don't know if you can hear it, but the audio is Robert Guthrie, professor at Southern Methodist, and it's the handle suite. What I like about these all transitional planes is I ended up trimming them up, relacquering them, cleaning the tote and all the good stuff off. I took the frog out of it, and it's a perfect sanding beam, especially for classical fingerboards, which are non-radius flat. Stuff's perfect, love it. Pretty close, so I'm gonna check with the straight edge, see what I'm working with. I like working with the backlight, especially here at the window. I can see what's happening.
chalk it. Hard scraper. Just gonna knock this edge flat real everything out with the longer straight edge. Go to the A side. I'm gonna jump down to this A degree for a second. Somebody's playing with all dude. We're getting close. So we just keep doing that until all the chalk lines are taken. Alright, the board is fairly leveled now. There's still a little bit more to go with finer grit sandpaper, but the initial level is there. Uh, all the chip outs have been filled. Um, start, fret slots have been cleaned. So now I just gotta make sure that we set the depth on them, the correct depth. Um, so for that, it really helps to have this little guide kind of running through the slot. Pretty close. But what we'll do is have a, just a Japanese saw with a little stop on it. And it should stop at the correct depth. But I always go back and check. Don't know if you can hear the audio, but it's Gabrielle Bianco. It's cool because they have the same first name. I have a traditional English or American cut saw, uh, but I prefer the Japanese. It's a little bit sharper, I think. Um, and also it cuts <clears throat> on the full stroke, which I like. gone through with a 20 thou and made sure they're all the proper thickness. The fret slots to begin with are a little tight, but I'm going to be doing a compression fret job on this guy, so I don't want them too narrow or too loose. I right, just check the uh, depth. That one needs a bit. That one needs a bit. That one's good. Good. All right, so what we're going to do now is set the depth on all these fret slots to make sure they're the proper depth. Uh, go back with the triangle file and make sure we camphor, or I don't know what people call it, but you're putting a slight bevel to the top of the fret slot 
And what that allows the fret to sit deeper in there because sometimes the bottom of the fret might not be completely square. Um, you're also doing a favor for whoever comes next to pull the fret out, they're gonna have less chip. Uh, no one did that for me, so when I pull the frets, even though I heated, there's still a little bit of a chip. So it's just courtesy. And I also think the frets sit deeper. Um, this is just a Japanese saw with a stop on it set to the proper depth. I already went through and cleaned up all the fret slots earlier, fix all the chip out. So now it's almost the final stage. I'm setting the correct depth, then I'll go back through, um, <clears throat> hit the board with some fine sandpaper, and get ready for frets today. As for glue, I like to glue my frets down. Um, depends what I'm doing or the instrument, but most of the time I'm gonna go with a uh, animal protein glue, either a hot hide or a fish glue. Uh, stay away from the uh, type on type glues, they don't transfer energy very well. Um, sometimes I do use super glue, just depends on the instrument and what the job calls for. chip right there and that's why I leave the slotting to almost the end of my super glue dropper. I don't know if you can hear the audio but it's Gabriel Bianco. I like it because we have the same first name. Try to line the original chip up if possible. This is a super glue. And for the other one, I get some ebony dust in there. That's gonna be hidden under the fret slot anyways, under the fret, um, but I still like to have it clean. So I'll go through and check the rest of them, come back, clean that up. And for setting the triangle file, I'll show you how to do that. Just very lightly. Go through each slot. All right, so I got the board <clears throat> leveled up, um, cleaned up, fret slots, depth set on them, chamfer, camber, whatever you call it, the edges. Um, and because I've removed a fair amount of material, I had a hard edge on the edge here of the fingerboard. So I just rolled it over slightly, not the board, the edge. So when you grip it, your hand's not hitting a hard edge. It just feels good. Okay, but so this board, oddly enough, is a very expensive guitar but the ebony is not the best quality. Um, and it's not because it's not super black, but I mean by that, it's, it was a little bit too chippy. It was a little porous and the grain wasn't really quarter sawn. It was a kind of a wild grain going through there. Um, so we see it's not a uniform color. And I think for this guitar, it should be darker. Sometimes I like to keep the beautiful wood uh, and highlight the irregularities in it because that's where the beauty comes from. But we're gonna do something different here. So for ebonizing, it's actually shoe polish. Let's take the camera to zoom. Okay, 
so this stuff stains everything, so I always wear gloves. sit too long and start to remove it pretty quick. And after I fret the guitar, I'm still gonna come back with steel wool. And what that's gonna do is gonna remove a little bit of this ebonizing. Uh, and you, you all see the grain underneath it. So it's a little dark right now. But there's still a lot to do. Oh, the audio is Dennis Azabagic. I believe it's Jose Sonata. All right, let's get some frets in here. Double checking the fret slots, making sure there's nothing in there. I already cleaned. I got the frets prepped, slots prepped. But I did wax the board. And I already checked. And I vacuumed. But I don't want anything in there that could keep the fret from seating properly. So I'm gonna hammer these guys in. I do press as well. Um, it kind of just depends what's, what kind of guitar it is and what I feel needs to happen. And with this, I'm gonna do a compression fret. using fish glue. I might use high glue. Uh, sometimes I'll super glue, but very rarely. Kind of just depends what it's called for. But I almost never use the uh, type on type glue. So the reason I'm doing a compression fretting is we had a bunch of uh, forward bow and too much relief. Um, and underneath the nut slot, it does look like they put uh, something in the neck to stiffen it. It looks maybe, I don't know, it's under tape, we'll find out later. But it definitely wasn't ebony, it wasn't carbon fiber, it was, it was a wood, a soft looking wood. Um, so the compression fretting, we're gonna stiffen up the neck, which has a couple effects. One is it pushes out the relief. And also with stiffening the neck, you're gonna get better tonal transfer into the box. Well, 
one thing people tell me they're always they say you know the guitar sounds so much better after you fretted it So over the body, <clears throat> I had this old Taylor fretbook. It has a little arm that goes inside, and it goes underneath one of the braces that run across there. And it's not so much there to support as it is a dead blow, just to absorb impact. But it does support the fingerboard right there. But I'm not banging on this hard. If you did a good job prepping the fingerboard, these are gonna be pretty, pretty level. The better you prep the board, the bread, the better you seat the frets. Less you have to do when you do your fret level crown on it. And I'm happy with that. Blue, just a little ebony strip. Might let it dry more. It's it pretty flaky when it's dry. So officially is great. The only nemesis is water. Um, it'll loosen up fairly quick. But I always finish the ends of the slot, of the fret slot. So there's not a surface touching the air. Blue surface that is. Usually use a rag. It just makes it a mess. Yeah, definitely using a rag next time. I'm gonna try to cut down my rag usage, but now I know why I use a bunch of rags. Yeah, I'm gonna dry it off, flake it off later. Cool. All right, got the frets in the other day. Now I'm gonna knock these fret ends down. So these are the Summit brand fret nippers and these are the stew mac ones 
hear a difference in the amount of force it takes to clip it. And with the softer nickel wire, I mean, believe it or not, I actually get closer with these guys. Now when I'm doing Evo or stainless, oh, hit the camera. When I'm doing Evo or stainless, I definitely go with the Jess Car ones or the Summit brand. file first. Just trying to get the frets even with the board. Let's wait till we're here. On my other bench, I have a big old clamp that I hold that down with. This that file I made the other day. It has a Grover gunsmithing file on it. And then I stuck it to a piece of Grenadillo. Grenadillo. And this one's a second cut smooth. And as for the bevel, I do it by hand and I like to leave as much meat as possible on the fret. Then I always come back and relacquer or shellac the edge. Feels good, let's get some string tension on this.
people ask sometimes, hey, does it matter what order you put the strings in? I don't know. I always just go outside in. So I'll do like first or sixth and then work my way towards the center. Um, I mean, I guess you could really torque the top, but I mean, guitars are pretty sturdy. You'll be fine. I'm reusing the original strings to set it up in the jig. Uh, once I do all the initial nut and everything, I'll put a new set of strings on. But uh, the guy who owns this guitar, he's brought me several instruments and I'm always telling him, hey, leave me some string to work with. You know, like put at least three wraps on there so if I take the strings off, I can put them back on. Sometimes people ask, well, you know, I just put new strings on. Why do you gotta put a new set? And the answer is because uh, I can't get them back on and I'm not gonna waste 30 minutes trying to get it done. So there's like some debate, I guess, about the fretting jig, like, oh, you don't need it or whatever. They say, man, do what you want. You don't want to use it, don't use it. You want to use it, use it. Um, you know, everybody's going to do things the way they want to do it. But the whole concept or idea is that it allows you to work under string, simulated string tension. If your guitar is a truss rod, it's something not as important because you can adjust the relief on the neck with a truss rod um, but on classical guitars and older steel strings that don't have truss rods I don't know I mean I've, this is the third one that I own so I, I bought the original not the original but I had a wood one a while back and used that for about five years and then I bought myself the aluminum one it was infinitely better um, and business is fast enough where I can actually run two jigs in tandem so you know I'm very blessed that way Like I was saying before, everybody has a different way of fretting your guitar, setting it up. Um, this is the way I do it. If you don't like it, cool. If you like the way you do it, I do it, good. This little Peterson tuner, the strobo clip guy. All right, now we're on to the grind and polish part, or a fret level crown, whatever you want to call it. So I got the neck under string tension and manipulated the way that I want. And now we're just gonna do some fret leveling. Let's see, start 220.
common song. big triangle file. I start off with that and I work my way over to diamond stone or not stone sorry the diamond files. I didn't take very much off when I was doing the level crown. I added a little bit of fall away as well over the uh, body. There's a lot, this neck has a solid wood. Well, you got a bar that runs across, you got another one here, and then you actually have a C underneath, a nice, I prefer that. Underneath you have the fingerboard, and then you have three pieces of wood. You got ebony, you have the neck, then you have your block. So there might be some swelling there. So I always hear yourself a little bit of fall away. And you want some info on a great book or a great video series is the early line. All those two Mac books and videos, it's good stuff. I mean, that's where I learned from, that's probably exactly what they do. Cutting loop just minimizes on the chatter. So the reason I did a compression fret is I want to push the relief out of the neck, stiffen it up without removing too much wood. Um, and because there is a twist, there actually is a little bit of a low spot here, and there's a bit of a low spot there. So the board was doing that. So, I don't know. I thought about replacing the fingerboard, but I was like, nah, I can get most of the twist out, most of the relief set. And then with a nice tall fret, this is a 50 thou tall fret, there's plenty of room to work with. 
And when it's all said and done, there'll still be a nice tall fret left behind. And this is a 100 by 50. The audio is Segovia, the 3927, the 39 recordings, back when he was in his prime. I remember when I was at SMU um, studying grad school guitar, um, we did a music history for specifically guitar. My professor was an actual student, like direct student of his, um, and Alario Diaz as well. So he would always tell us stories. Um, he said, you know, you want to listen to good Segovia, listen to it when he was young. What I'm gonna do is catching that little edge and just rolling it over. Sometimes I do a little semi hemispherical things. On the electrics, I'll do the little bevel on them. On classicals, I like to leave a good amount of meat because the guys are always doing pull offs and whatnot. Um, and they tend to like some meat on the fret. Steel wool ready. Some 400 grit wet dry.
sometimes they're running packing tape behind this and it makes it last a little bit longer, but this was just in my scrap sandpaper little box. That helps to put their round back on there. I mean, I took very little off the top, so they weren't really flat, but it's a good step to do. Aggressive finer grits you go are just there to take the scratches out from the previous grits. Right, I'm gonna get some more <clears throat> tension to that thread end. shape these before I put them in to match the radius of the uh, sound hole. I'm just cleaning up the little edge that was sticking out. Now I'm going to go back and finish over that area. Alright, take this tape off and clean the board up. Got to run tape over the body. There's three layers of tape that I got going on here. There's the uh, white sign makers tape, the real low tack stuff, and then I have two layers of uh, 3M blue tape on top.
believe it or not, that tape is thick enough to not allow this little file to get that very bottom burr. All right, so this steel wool that I have here is zero, and then I'm gonna go double zero and then you know, triple, and then I take it over the buffing wheel. A little bit of Audi's solvent on it. Pretty good. We're still gonna do way more buffing on this. We're gonna hit it on the buffing wheel and then maybe even some mother's uh, polish. We'll see. Well, the, that actual ebony feels slick. Feels good. So before I could fit an 18, maybe it was a 16 thou underneath the uh, seventh fret. And the whole reason that I did a compression fretting was to be able to straighten out the relief in the neck. Let's take a look at the seventh fret. Straight edge. Got a not straight edge. Here we go. This is the seventh, fifth, 12. I could chuck some foul away, which won't fit between a fret. Too. Get a little bit of fall away. You know, this bag is straight. 